or so. We've got NPL men's New South Wales action for you and two teams looking desperate for a win. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Football New South Wales coverage of the NPL Men's New South Wales competition for 2024. It's round seven action from the Arctic Circle, and the two teams in front of us, Northwest Sydney Spirit and Central Coast Mariners Academy. Now, it's early in the season, but even so, these two teams will be pretty keen for a win to help them climb the table. The two teams entering this contest in the lower reaches of the ladder, but... 24 rounds to go and so plenty of time to improve things for both Spirit and the Mariners. Eric Subihana here on the mic. Thanks for tuning in via the live tab on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. For those of you less familiar with these teams, it's Northwest Sydney Spirit in the traditional colours of the old Gladesville Hornsby Soccer Association. The gold jerseys, black shorts and the gold socks. Well, for Central Coast Mariners, it's the away kit, the all navy blue affair and the young kids for the Mariners looking very striking indeed. 
There's just about enough time to take you through the two starting lineups for both teams. So firstly, for Northwest Sydney Spirit, in goal, number one, Chris Marquez. Then number three, Kyle Shaw. Number four, Jared McKinley. Number eight, their captain, Grant Cornwell. Number 11, Ollie Wigan. Number 13, Simon Nicholas. Number 16, Ante Bakmas. Number 17, Jake Chidiak. Number 18, Zach Chanchi. Number 19, Jesse Michelle. And number 20, Jared Lum. And in spirit, as always, as has been the case for many years, that they are coached by David Perkovich. Wow. For Central Coast Mariners in goal, number one, Jack Wachowski. Then number two, Michael Paragali. Number three, Chair Deng. Number four, Andre Parks. Number five, Harry Menem. Number eight, the captain, Lucas Chapluna. Number 10, the Mariners' top scorer, Lucas Smythe. Number 11, Donatien Nionkuru. Number 18, Prayag Tapa. Number 37, Bailey Brantman. And number 39, Adam Hall. And the Mariners, they are coached by Lucas Villela. Well, there's just enough time to give a shout out to the third to the third team, the match officials, without whom no organized football could be played. So in the center with the whistle is Jack Coutinho. The assistant nearest to us is a Blake Sanchez Cruz. The assistant on the scoreboard side of the Arctic Circle is Amir Hossein Hasnani. And today's fourth official is Thomas Dale. Uh, for Spirit, we've scored in each of their last four games. But as I said at the top of this broadcast, still looking for their first victory of 2024. They come into this one with just the three points on the table three draws so far from their opening six games well for the Mariners they have tasted victory but it was just the once back in round three at their home at Plume Park when they defeated Hills United newly promoted our Hills United of course and that was a high scoring affair the Mariners coming from behind to win by five goals to three and the Mariners in fact played another high scoring affair in midweek but they were on the losing side losing 5-2 to high flying Western Sydney Wanderers of course, the Wanderers coached by a former Mariners Academy coach, in fact, in Andrew Christensen. So, you know, perhaps just a little bit more of a delay because uh, we're delighted to say we have a football New South Wales photographer for this one. Uh, so, there's Dan Ullman in the green bib doing some very fine work taking uh, team photos of both uh, the Mariners and a spirit. But now, there we are. We're ready to get underway. And of course, it is the, I'll say, almost becoming a tradition for Saturdays during the NPL New South Wales season. This is the second part of a doubleheader that Spirit hold with both their women's and men's teams. And there's the whistle from Jack Coutinho. Away we go for the first half of this one. And in the women's game, the 3 p.m. kickoff before this one, very exciting affair indeed, plenty of drama. And Emily Minetz, late, late equalizer, ensured a two-all draw and the share of the spoils for Manly United. Manly United. Scoring late to uh, take a point off the home team, the Norfolk City Spirit women's team. Awkward bounce there for Luca Shikluna. And in fact, I think, ah, so Coutinho, the referee, Jack Coutinho, has uh, picked up a very slight handball from the Mariners skipper Shikluna there. And it's early days, but uh, as the team's jockey for league positions, every game is crucial. And, uh, certainly, I'm loving the new 30 game season of course with the expansion of this competition to 16 teams happened at for the start of last season there should be a foul and that is uh, Chanchi I think fouling I think that was Andre Parks uh, for Spirit there was a tight one in their last outing uh, it was here as well in Macquarie Park and uh, they lost 2-1 uh, here to St George City a team that they got promoted to this division with at the end of the 2022 League One men's season. In fact, Central Coast Mariners also earning promotion from League One men's in 2022. So two teams new to the, to the top tier of men's football, so to speak, but they've certainly added a lot of value already. It's up into the sky and It's Jake Chidiak, who was the one chasing it for the home side spirit. But now, Lucas Smythe, well, it was an interesting pocket of space, but there's a very easy explanation as to why he was off. Why he was in so much space, he was offside. And no chance to raise the flag for Amir Hussein Hasnani on the far side. But spirit uh, not hanging around. Uh, another short pass to keep things going, and that's certainly the way David Perkovich likes his teams to play. It's been a feature of the Spirit teams basically ever since he took over for the start of the 2017 season. A season that somehow simultaneously feels like yesterday and feels so long ago. 
So much has changed. But it's still David Perkovich in charge of Spirit. And now, potential early attack for the home side. Ollie Wigan couldn't reel that one in. Chanchi. And Chanchi doing the media favor. Easier to pick out in those long sleeves. The long sleeve number 18 jersey. But a man is doing enough scrambling. And so ends up going back all the way to Spirit's showstopper. Now Marquez goes long. And kind of the invention from Paragali. Marin is right back. The back heel that finds a teammate. But then Spirit win it back. Michelle looking to bring up, well, bring his teammates into play. My apologies. But this is the two teams training early. Jabs, to use a boxing analogy, trying to settle themselves. And uh, I like hearing this. It's another thing that's become familiar, familiar over recent years. It's Spirit Home Games. And Spirit Youngsters saying back to support their first grade teams. Of course, you want all your youngsters to have ambitions of becoming first graders one day. It's good to see uh, Spirit connecting the youth with the seniors. Now, a bit of a frantic opening, but now things slow down. And that's Chair Deng on the ball. <coughs> Passing it off Lucas Shakuna. Now, Deng allowed room to step into the opposition half. And there's a rebound. And then Mariners throw. Of course, we do apologize, but yes. It's very important to be sun smart, especially with the afternoon games. And there's a straight ball that threatens. Yeah, that's definitely hit the scaffolding here. But yeah, someone might have to retrieve that ball. But you know, we've got another one, courtesy of the fourth official, Thomas Dale. And away we go. Carl Shaw playing it across to Simon Nicholas. Now Chanchi. In fact, as we look at how Spirit are lining up, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen Grant Cornwell playing anything other than central defense for Spirit, but he uh, looks to be playing it uh, right back. Uh, today showing uh, Grant Cornwell, the Spirit captain showing his versatility. As Marquez looking for Jesse Michel. Mariners and they've spread it wide to Adam Hall. He's one on one with Cornwell. Strong tackle there from Buckmars. And Spirit have won at the free kick. By the way, just uh, while we have a brief stoppage, let's go through the subs. So, firstly, for Spirit, they can choose from Corey Kavanagh, Richard Ducko, Yanni Bazoukis. Joel Wade, Kaya Williams, and Jacob Sullivan. Actually, apologies if I'm wrong with this. I do believe Joel Wade will be the backup keeper there. Well, for the Mariners. Uh, their bench options are the backup keeper will be Dylan Parage Cullen. And the other bench options for Mariners coach Lucas Villela. They're Jordan Small, Mate Bushek, Ty Headley, Yanni Nassis, and Alexander Guntunas. Oh, yeah, we're definitely into the swing of things now in NPL men's and in the women's competition as well, which started, which, as is usually the case, starts a couple of weeks after the men's competition. But, yeah, this is, of course, one of eight NPL men's games on this weekend. We had one last night with Sydney Olympic defeating Manly United 2-0 at Cromer Park. And this game is the earliest of the five games for today or tonight. And two on Sunday to round off the seventh round of NPL Men's New South Wales for 2024. Of course, you'll be able to see all of those live on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. But, of course, we do hope that you stay with us and then switch over to one of the 7 p.m. kickoffs or the 7.15 p.m. kickoff after this one's done. Good hustle from Ollie Wigan, but a little bit too much hustle, according to the ref, Jack Coutinho. Now, apologies, I yes. actually have no, made, it, made a small error when reading out the lineups. Uh, Prayag Tapa, Mariner Central midfielder, actually wearing number 16, not number 18, as I said. That's my apologies. But, got in, got in. There it is. So hopefully that's the last error that I made this evening. A, by the way, if you were able to hear that whistle, of course, those of you familiar with this uh, facility, there is another field behind us so that whistle not anything to do with this game in fact looking at the jerseys i'm not well for a city football local it does look like as 
as Wachowski plays it forward. That uh, some loop. I think Northwest Sydney football, possibly Northwest Sydney football men's Premier League is in action right behind us. This, this venue here in Macquarie Park certainly very busy during uh, the winter season. I feel feels appropriate to call it the winter season now. Uh, those of us who were here for the women's game between Spirit and Manly. Especially myself and uh, today's camera operator Chester. Thanks for, your, thanks for your work. Good work as always, Chester, who was filming the women's game as well. But it was quite warm during the women's game. And I can tell you they, they don't call this place the Arctic Circle for no reason because it is not warm now. Spirit coach David Perkovich might be putting on a jacket before the end of this game. But anyway, that's uh, a thought for later. Jared Lum has a very good long throw on him. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Good distance on that one. Cornwell's in there, and Chanchi not allowed to pull the trigger. There's the shot. Good technique on that. Good technique from Jared McKinley it was to keep the shot down, and the deflection results in the first corner of, of today's game. Jared Lum, very experienced campaigner, of course. The former young soccer, he will be taking this one for Spirit. Looks to be an outswinger, of course, from the right-footed Lum. Spirit, lots of height for Jared Lum to aim at. Good corner as well. Cornwall, the one closest to it, but there's the defensive header and the incredibly tall Lucas Smythe using his height in a defensive sense. In a defensive sense for the Mariners. As there's a clearance from Tarpa, and that might actually end up on the. Yeah, that has actually ended up on the field number two behind us. Such is the close proximity of these two fields, but Spirit have found another ball fairly quickly. Cornwell. Actually, Going back to that earlier point of how I've usually seen him play at centre back for Spirit over many years. Actually, cannot remember the last time I saw Grant Cornwell take a throw in. There's Jared Love. That's a great throw. Of course, he can't be offside from a throw in. Jake Chidiak knew that. He was in behind Harry Menham, Mariners left back. And so Jared Love, just like that, with that Megan Campbell esque fling, he's gained 40 metres for Spirit. And now I think we know where this one's going. No point trying to disguise it when he got it. a long throw like Jared Love has. But all those tall players for him to aim at. And it goes just over Cornwell. And it's scrambled away by the Mariners before Jesse Michelle could get a shot away. In fact, I think that's Simon Nicholas who just um, never ran out of position, just decides to let it run out of play. And Simon Nicholas, I think the left-sided of uh, the, the Spirit Central Defensive Partnership didn't really fancy taking the ball all the way on the right-hand side of the field. Of course, that's Spirit slowing it down. That's allowed the Mariners to get back into their, to their defensive shape. It's just past the 10-minute mark here in Macquarie Park. Nil all between Northwest Sydney Spirits and Central Coast Mariners. Thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. So great that it's free to view. And, of course, it's on YouTube, so you don't even have to sign up for anything. It's that easy to watch this, comp this competition, this great competition, and that's just the way we like it. And Mariners win a foul. And, by the way, of course, it's not just the NPL men's comp. You can watch every... NPL Women's New South Wales game on the Football New South Wales YouTube page as well. And the people who did just that for the earlier game at this venue between Spirit and Manly, they certainly watched a good one. <coughs> Andre Parks, now Chair Deng. A little bit of room before he gets closed down by Michelle. Uh, the ball down the line, I think, possibly a little bit of breeze here. And he's just taken that out of play and definitely out of Harry and Minim's reach. By the way, I think we'll... Uh, next kickoffs in this competition at 7 p.m., so uh, perhaps might, when those games are underway, keep you up to date with the early goings in this one. So you know uh, which game to switch to after this game's done in case you want to watch more than one game in a day. Uh, certainly. It's a great way to spend your Saturday watching NPL Men's New South Wales. Now, the interesting, as I see how the two teams set up, uh, I'll have to watch a bit more of this just to make sure. It does look like it's three on three in midfield. So, uh, all six central midfielders, of course, three for each side. It looks like they're going to have to work very hard to find space. 
That's, that's the puzzle facing both teams here today. Shakuna actually to find that space has dropped as deep as the center backs. And it's a decent run there from the Mariners captain. That's a better than decent ball. It's given Adam Hall something to chase. And Hall now he can, uh, can face his teammates in there. The supporting run from Shakuna. Good energy. He thought about the switch. Instead, it's the safer pass back to his uh, kind of central midfield partner, Priyak Tapa. And it's a good, it's good shape from Spirit. And got everyone behind the ball very quickly. Deng again getting across halfway and ooh, it's could have given it away, but the bounces worked in his favor. With the bounce of Jake Chidiak. Now Menem overlapping from left back. And in fact, there's two. Oh, it was the left half, so to speak, of the Mariners back forward. Very far forward, but Menem had moved just a little bit too early. And so that's offside. Yeah, so games uh, in NPL men's coming up. Later today, three kickoffs at 7 p.m. Firstly, Marconi versus Sydney FC, 7 p.m. kickoff from the Palace Marconi Stadium, uh, and that'll be called by the People's Champion Nicholas Kutniak. Also at 7 p.m. from Landon Stadium, Hills United versus Rockdale Illidan. I like to call that one the Daniel Petkovsky plate. Daniel Petkovsky making a longtime Rockdale player, but making the switch in the offseason to Hills United. Hills versus Rockdale, that'll be called by the Adonis Will Gotsis, and also at 7 p.m. It's from the Illidan Sports Centre, St. George FC versus Apia Leichhardt. And as Ollie Wigan wins the corner, Spirit second corner. It's good work from Wigan there again. So tricky, such a tricky character to deal with in those wide areas. And by the way, oh yeah, St. George FC versus Apia Leichhardt. By the way, keep an eye out for the match report when that's released on NPL New South Wales socials. The, written by Jack George. He's got a few years under his belt as a football New South Wales writer, but he's still a teenager, if you can believe it. He's as young as some of these Mariners players. Jared Lum, another decent corner and a spirit head there. Not cleared, at least as the first touch. But now, potential for Mariners on the counter-attack. Could be three on three. Now, there's the run from Neon Kuru. And then, there's a shirt pull. And Bailey Brantman did not like that at all. It will be a free kick and a yellow card. I think the yellow card's gone to Simon Nicholas. And in fact, just to be clear, it's my check, my check with um, the writer, the Football New South Wales writer for this game, Justin Smith. Just see if perhaps, perhaps he had a better view of this. Now, free kick for the Mariners coming up. Free kick coming up, Shakluna to take. Aim far post and Chedeng won the header, but also a fouled at Grant Cornwell. By the way, also, yeah, there's one more game. I, there's actually one more game coming up on the Football New South Wales YouTube page from the NPL Men's New South Wales competition. It's a 7.15 p.m. kickoff, slightly different one from Penzo's Parks Park. It's St. George City versus the team some people like to call the pride of Western Sydney, and that, of course, is Blacktown City. So St. George City versus Blacktown City. A tale of two cities, if you if you will. And those two teams certainly have great expectations for the 2024 season, so that should be a good one. And then, ooh, well, Lucas Valella uh, wanted to play at that, and just uh, a little bit of a collision with Grant Cornwell, but uh, nothing that really bothers either of them. <coughs> Nicholas wants it on the left foot. Ball, it's a ball. decent ball. The scraps picked up by Jesse Michelle. Overlapping run from Wigan. And that's where it goes. Now Wigan into the box. And Wigan, did it get, take a touch off the Mariners? No, it did not. That's defended well. And that, that is a little bit of a lesson for any kids watching. Because that's why you double up on your wingers at every possible opportunity. Yes. Generally speaking, wingers are the most dangerous with the ball at their feet. So, generally, usually they need a little bit of extra assistance. And it worked out for the Mariners there. Now, did Michelle get back on side? Flag stays down from Blake Sanchez Cruz. Wigan again, edge of the box. Shots blocked. Now, Neon Kuru. And uh, Neon Kuru 
By the way, speaking of players who are hard to deal with on the ball, Donatin Nyankuru is quite the incredible record already, already after six games. If my memory serves me correctly. He's won five penalties. All five penalties uh, dispatched by Lucas Smythe. Now, good ball here, and Michelle is blocked off, gets a second chance. There's the save from Wachowski. Wachowski saves again from Wigan, and then there's the goal line clearance from Harry Menham. And the Mariners doing just enough, defending as a team again. Header from Cornwell. And now here's Chidiak. And in fact, it'll be brought back for a spirit free kick as Cornwell wins. But draws another foul, that time Adam Hall drawing drawing the ire, well, ire is not the right word, but yes, drawing the whistle from Jack Coutinho. So Jared Bum will take this set piece. And, and, and who does Lam aim at? If you think about the obvious area of targets, well, small for choice. You've got Chidiak, Shaw, Cornwell, Michelle. Chidiak, actually, the lower ball, he had the first touch at it. He takes a tumble, but will go on. Now... Do you like to say set pieces or attacking set pieces are an opportunity for both teams to score? You saw the space was there for a little moment for the Mariners, but not for long. And the Mariners settle it. 19th minute here in the Arctic Circle, still nil all between Northwest Sydney Spirit and Central Coast Mariners. So Round seven, NPL men's New South Wales action. Harry Menham once again getting very high off our screen. See a possible passing option for Chair Deng, who has shown a willingness to cross halfway with the ball at his feet, even after under some pressure. And that's uh, good composure from the Mariners number three to turn around and find a teammate. So they try some other way, the Mariners, to keep this move going. And it's Denham up against Chidiak. Gets the cross in low and almost breaks for Neon Kuru. Sekluna. The look away pass, and Neon Kuru almost got on the end of that one. Bakmaz is blocking the path to goal and Wigan has won that free kick. Yes, and thanks, thanks Justin Smith for just confirming, yes, it was Simon Nicholas who got booked there. So he's the first player into the book for this, uh, for this evening. And of course, as with all our NPL men's New South Wales match reports, um, you'll be able to... I read what Justin Smith writes. His write-up of this game is his always excellent summaries of uh, these games. But yeah, you'll be able to read the Spirit versus Mariners match report later tonight on NPL New South Wales Facebook. Who's the last touch off? It's off Michelle. Goal kick. Oh, I've just spotted where Justin Smith is, and um, he's been joined by a man who's pretty much a football New South Wales media royalty. It's great to see the man they call the voice of Central Coast football, Peter Pryor. Big Mariners fan. He's made the trip down the motorway to support Mariners Academy. Love to see that. Of course, he's returning the favor, so to speak. Oh, actually, I'll hold that thought as Harry Menham has space. And under pressure from Cornwell, he crosses straight into Chris Marquez's gloves. But actually, I, was, I made the trip up the motorway for the Mariners a game last weekend where the Mariners drew two all with Manly United and I very enjoyed sitting next I very much enjoyed sitting near Pete Pryor in in the Plume Park Grandstand and hearing his his commentary his excellent commentary of our last weekend's game at Plume Park and so he's returning the favour so to speak uh, by watching the game that I'm calling Now, Chidiak's the target of that pass from Cornwell, and it's the combination of Menem and Deng. All right, stop him. Now, Shakluna. Shakluna's eyes up, looking for options. Now, Lucas Smythe dropped deep and wide. He's outnumbered by Spirit players. And a real arm wrestle here in the opening 22 minutes or so, as McKinley. McKinley ruled to have won the ball kickoff. Deng going back to Warshawski. And then they try the far side as well with Michael Paragali. Now Brantman. Always want to cut inside to his left foot. And not allowed to cut inside that time. Touch play, touch play. I'll tell you what, I'm just trying to see what's off screen. And 
Yes, I know the fourth official might be today's Thomas Dale. Yeah, you do just stand in the technical area. I mean, he's as busy as the other three officials, that's for sure. Nice touch from Cornwell, Spirit Skipper, and this is going to overlap as well. Nice one too, and the cross is not bad either. Here's Wigan, and his first touch doesn't beat Paragali. Paragali, perfectly positioned, and Grant Cornwell, uh, yep, definitely showing his versatility. Built a nice move down the right-hand side, and that cross had the Mariners sweating for a bit. Chanchi couldn't beat his marker on the far touch line. Neon Kuru on another run with Nicholas chasing and then that's the foul committed by Kyle Shaw. No goals as of yet in this game but really enjoying We're watching these two teams try to solve the puzzle and uh, create chances. For the Baroness Harry Menham, who he really, <coughs> I suppose it's now, you know, you call it traditionally the role of the left back, was overlapping at every possible opportunity. And the days when left backs stayed close to the centre backs, very much a thing of my childhood. As there's the header from Smythe and goes across the place of goal. Now it's Adam Hall who's retrieved that. So crossing opportunity and near post before it's up and away, I think, by Bucknells. Now, that attempted ball for him from Chidiak, careering off a Mariners player. He drew it, ooh, from the crowd, but thankfully no one's copped a nasty ball to the face or anything like that. Clever header from Bakmas to Wigan, and Chanchi is already forward. Now, Wigan, there he is, charging forward. Chanchi has found him, and the cross blocked. By the way, two NPL men's New South Wales games on Sunday or tomorrow obviously so down on the south coast it's uh, Wollongong Wolves versus Western Sydney Wanderers that's a very intriguing game the top two teams and now that one will be called by the man I like to call Dublin Dave Dave Feeney the Irishman's a new addition uh, to the commentary team for this year and I'm certainly glad I'm certainly glad to have another fan of the Irish national team in the comms team now there's a great header and it's in it's in. Ante Buckmars with a stooping header and the long throw has paid dividends. Jared Long with a great fling from the far side. The flick on was precise and Ante Buckmars reacted quickest. A very, very low stooping header. He's diverted it into the back of the net off Jack Wachowski's fingertips and it is 1-0 to Spirit. go <coughs> a very nice move looks like they've been working on that during training sessions for you know, the whole preseason and the season as well and that's why you work on these set pieces in fact Ante Bachmars we just and I think spirit physio Rebecca Gonzalez just have a brief look but you know, he's okay to continue doesn't need any patching up doesn't need any running repairs and there we go and so often in these tight contests set pieces can make the difference and so far a set piece has made the difference for the home side. Wigan possibly fouled. Michelle will keep the attack going. Now Chidiak, bit of a step over. Chidiak low cross, and there's the first time finish off the bar from Michelle. So close to opening his account as a spirit player. Jesse Michelle denied by the frame of the goal. Now Chidiak ends. That tackle from Adam Hall was as subtle as some of my jokes. He's actually, I don't know. That um, Adam Hall absolutely nowhere near the ball there. Spirit set piece, another Spirit set piece coming up, and not long after they scored from one. So Lum, now interesting position. 
probably too wide to have a shot, although you never know. But it's also very hard to float that one in over a short distance and land it onto someone's head. What will Lum do here? He goes far post, and I think, was that Shaw? Yeah, Shaw using all of his height. I think he's like almost two meters tall, or six foot six, an old bunny. And that's, he climbed over the defenders, but it looped up into presumably grateful Jack Wachowski's hands. Bakmas has been uh, pinged, uh, I think, for. Shall we say over enthusiastic use of the hands and Lucas Smith? So Shakluna looks like he's the, the nominated dead ball expert for this game for the Mariners. He will deliver. Che Deng is close to that, and I think he got a little bit of a touch. That's not enough to divert it towards the goal. going short off the goal kick and Cornwell looks up all he does is find Chair Ding now Smythe again pulling out wide to get some touches Mariners top scorer with seven for the season but as of yet hasn't had any chances of his own in this game but apologies Actually, by the way, Ante Bachmaster's first goal of the season that we just saw, but this man on the ball, Jesse Michel, he has actually already scored this season, so I uh, misspoke earlier. My apologies, everyone. That's a Mariners free kick. Thank you. Sometimes I do worry about my eyesight. My vision just ain't as good it's not as good as it used to be, but uh, Justin Smith uh, confirming to me that it wasn't indeed Ante Bakhnas who scored the opening goal for Spirit. Menem. Spirit double up on him. The cross rebounds off. Well, rebounds off either Chidiak or Cornwell, but Cornwell, those two vehement, they thought it then took another touch off Menem. Officials don't agree, so that's the first Mariners corner for what well, we call it this evening. I suppose it's after 6 p.m. That's so now definitely in the evening of March the 23rd. Shakluno with the signal. Three Mariners fan players grouped really close together at the far post. That's where it goes, and then it dies. The trajectory dies, and that was very simple for Chris Marquez. Chanchi, another decent run. He's been, he's been pretty impressive early on. And Chanchi up against two. And I think he's looking for some kind of support. And he's lost out to some very, I think, very energetic defending. I think that was Michael Paragali. Chidiak. Was called for it and got it from Cornwell. Now bounce back and then. Passing <laughs> really not on at that time. <laughs> now it's opened up suddenly for Tarpa before Ollie Wigan puts an end to that. Now. Pocket of space for Smythe. That's closed down as well. And that's Bakmas sending it away. Yeah. 
intercept from Chanchi. Another uh, good intervention for the hosts. And then for Spirit now, such is the privilege of having the lead. They can slow it down a little bit. There's some safer passes, but of course. On the, an hour left, or probably more, with when you take into account stoppages. So certainly wouldn't generally not be the wisest decision to just try and sit on this for the remainder of the game. And that's not how they like to play anyway. Strong tackle there from McKinley. And McKinley tried to put the spin on this to uh, keep it in play for Chidiak. It's the right idea, but not enough spin on the ball. You could just see from the way he tried to, tried to strike that. Wanted backspin, didn't quite get enough of it. Now, yeah, Spirit really trying to box the Mariners in. A lot of Spirit plays in this corner of the field. So Menem goes for distance with the throw. Shaw with the header, and oh, there you go. When in doubt, head it, chuck it down the line. There's a lot of the time you gain 20 meters just like that. And so Harry Menem will get another throw. In. Brantman, who's now moved over to the left-hand side of the Mariners formation. So I think, is there a winger swap? Of course, yeah, winger swaps are very common all the time, but now it's Brantman on the left and Paul on the right, although, in fact, they're almost next to each other. As in this particular phase of play, as Ch Chanchi has it stolen from behind him. Now, Brantman, nice ball for Neon Kuru. And Neon Kuru up against Carl Shaw, and he'll get into the box. Here's Neon Kuru on the right foot, and then didn't get the contact right. So, there's a save, and Chris Marquez just falls on the ball. And relies on the synthetic turf, just taking a couple of deep breaths. Strong header from Nicholas, and equally strong header from Shakluna, although accidental collision because Wiggins had a bit of a sore one here and that was almost awkward for yes, the Mariners and for Andre Parks who bounced in quite favour him but Parks has dealt with that under pressure from Michelle Buckmaster with the header this time. And Shakluna claims, but will not get a throw. Uh, Cornwell considering his options. And yep. Yeah. When in doubt, down the line. Cornwell, as you'd expect from someone who has a lot of experience as a central defender. Strong with the header, but now it's broken for Shakluna and Lum in the right place to block that. That could have been dangerous, but we'll never know. And now Chanchi is going to hold down R2 and try and use his speed. And uh, that's not what he was trying for, but the slice clearance from Paragali. And it's a Spirit can now try and set, set camp in the Mariners' half of the field. And this half has flown by. I've been enjoying calling this one for you on the Football News FL's YouTube page. Eric Subihan here on the mic, alongside our camera operator Chester. Yep, it's the Filipino Dream Team on Football New South Wales YouTube once again. And the score is currently Northwest Sydney Spirit 1, Central Coast Mariners 0. That goal coming about the 26th minute from Ante Bakmas. A very nice header off a set piece, a well-worked long throw. And that's Ante Bakmas's first goal of the season, his first goal for Spirit. And the man who was previously at a Bulls FC Academy. So far, making the difference in this game. Now, Neon Kuru, one and one. And now Brantman drifted into the box. Didn't take the ball with him, though. And now Cornwall takes it away, but then stealing on the blind side. Harry Menem. Now, Neon Kuru. And Neon Kuru, offside. Spirit are doing. I mean, sometimes Ante Bakmas is in central defense, but I think you can see here 
he stepped up uh, to provide additional numbers in central midfield when Spirit had the ball. But of course, a very tall man, Nati Bakmas, also dropping back to be in central defence when the Mariners have the ball. Although it's, he'll have to hurry if he's going to do it in this phase of play. Is Neon Kuru? He saw an opportunity, but is blocked by a black and gold wall. Now it's Wigan. Wigan gets it back from Chanchi. Now Nicholas. Spirit taking the opportunity to just play a bunch of passes under low pressure. Now Chanchi again. He's one on one with Paragali. Nicholas, almost the furthest forward we've seen, and he delivers a decent ball, but the flag's up. Flag's up on the near side from Blake Sanchez Cruz. Not sure who it was against. But that will result in a turnover. Goes to Marquez and Marquez. Ooh, the, I'm not sure if that was quite the contact he wanted. Chidiak made a good go of it, but now it's with Menem who finds himself almost on the right side of the field. Menem couldn't thread the pass through. Now that's a Carl Shaw for Spirit. And Wigan. Outside of the foot pass to find Michelle. And he holds it up, playing the target forward role. Now Chanchi. Go backwards, so it's again the Mariners quick enough. We'll get back in numbers and uh, force Spirit to uh, think again. But now pocket of space there. And it's Bakmas, I think. And then stepping forward. And then it's reeled in by Chair Deng. Lam looks up, tries the diagonal, and I think Chidiak's on side. And Chidiak shoots it's just over the angle of post and bar. Good vision from Lum, good run from Chidiak. And it wasn't too far away, although I mean, Jack Wachowski will say he did, that he had that one covered. Second ball! Now, Smythe's turn to be the target forward. And he's the target of a foul from Ante Bakmas. Mariners free kick down at the halfway line. In fact, well now, Jared Lam, who, well, I hope it's nothing serious because you know, Rebecca Gonzalez, the spirit physio, is on the field. And Jared Lam, uh, not feeling the best at the moment as we enter the final five minutes of this first half. Oh, yes. I did mention earlier, I think the two MPL men's games tomorrow won it. Both at 3 p.m. One of them is Wollongong Wolves versus Western Sydney Wanderers. That'll be called by Dublin Dave, Dave Feeney. The other 3 p.m. kickoff tomorrow is Sydney United, 58 versus Sutherland Sharks. And that will be called by uh, the man referred to as Pretty Boy, Alexander Molchanov. So those are your MPL men's New South Wales options for tomorrow. And in addition to that, on the Football New South Wales YouTube page via the live tab, you have a selection of seven NPL women's New South Wales games and um, the League One women's match of the round, the women's second tier in New South Wales. All of those available the same by the same method that you're watching this game. Shakluna, his turn to try diagonal. So that's I think Nicholas with the header. It's nice. Loops and falls at Ollie Wigan's feet. Now McKinley back to Nicholas. Now that will be Andre Park's ball. Michelle putting the pressure on and Chanchi, I think he saw the opportunity, almost stole, stole in. If Chanchi had won the ball, he would have had a chance to run into space with one of the Mariners. The central defenders out of position. And the 
on Kuru, dropping a little bit deeper. Now linking with Smythe. And they've been Neon Kuru and Smythe been the dynamic duo for the Mariners this season. Neon Kuru wins the penalties. Smythe bangs him in. We saw that uh, last weekend. And Lucas Smythe scored two penalties from the spot in the Mariners two all draw with Manly. Now Shakluna in swinger, and swinging in to Chris Marquez's box. Interesting, like in that uh, Mariners band of, so we say, three attacking midfielders. The three just behind the man at the point of attack, Lucas Smythe. And they're kind of switching positions. Neon Kuru in the number 11, Bailey Brantman in number 37, and Anapol in number 39. So yeah, that might be required. That might be what's required as the Mariners look to find a way back into this game. As we've seen already, all three of them very good with the ball at their feet. So, for, the, for Neon Kuru, Brantman, and all looks like a situation of finding the area of the field that works the best for them. Close down there by Chanchi. Chanchi might have another go at it. Giving away a free kick. Tapa almost on the left touch line. Neat exchange of passes with Neon Kuru, and there's the burst of speed to get past McKinley. Now here's the through ball, and it could be a big chance. And uh, saving the day, I think that was Bakmas. So he scored the goal. He's also thrown himself at the ball to prevent a Mariners goal. Great work from Spirits number 16. Uh, there was Neon Kuru at the heart of a very nice move for the Mariners as fourth official Thomas Dale. Uh, shows the boards and uh, remember to pay attention to it for once so minimum of two minutes time added on to end this first half Mariners corner Neon Kuru is the short option back to Shakluna there's the cross and uh, Marquez I'm pretty sure he called for it but Bachmas decided he couldn't take any risks now it's Smythe he's found the ball at his feet and Bachmas this time conceding the foul uh, could be a bit of a sore one so you might see the physio on again now, according to my very, very manual and unofficial corner count, it's two apiece. But please do not take that as gospel. In fact, yeah. So, yep, physio on as well. So, I suspect we'll see more than uh, two minutes of additional time signaled uh, by Thomas Dale. While, we ch while Rebecca Gonzalez checks on Ante Bachmas as well, I might go through the women's streams. Uh, you can watch on Football New South Wales YouTube live tomorrow. So 3 p.m. So sorry, 4:45 p.m. tomorrow. It's Football New South Wales Institute versus Northern Tigers from Valentine Sports Park, called by Dave McDonald. Then there's four NPL Women's Games at 5 p.m. I'll be at the Village Green to call newly promoted University of New South Wales versus Sydney Olympic. 5 p.m. there in Kensington. Also at 5 p.m. up at Lake Macquarie at Regional Football Facility. It's the voice of Central Coast football, Pete Pryor. He will become the voice of the Emerging Jets for one day at least. He's calling Emerging Jets versus Sydney University. Also at 5 p.m. down on the south coast, it's Illawarra Stingrays versus Blacktown Spartans. That's called by Wollongong Sax Boy, Thomas Phillips. So if you remember seeing a man with a saxophone at, in Wollongong when Wellington Phoenix were playing home games there, yeah, that was Thomas Phillips. He's also a football New South Wales commentator. And the other 5 p.m. game from Linwood Park, it's the two-time defending champions MacArthur Rams they're hosting Gladesville Ravens at Linwood Park then to end this weekend's women's action at 6.45 p.m. also from Valentine Sports Park it's actually a Valentine Sports Park doubleheader tomorrow it's Bulls FC Academy versus RPL Leichhardt there's the run from McKinley the cutback and it's all navy blue when the Mariners needed it most 
Cutbacks can be so dangerous, but the Mariners spotted that threat just in time. And it's um, number eight on number eight crime. Grant Cornwell, actually captain on captain crime as well. Grant Cornwell fouling Lucas Shakuna, but uh, nothing more yet. That was never going to be a yellow card. Harry Menon. Overlapping, perhaps for one more time in the first half. Smith, Smythe, sorry, is dispossessed. Now Michelle Choding almost didn't know where the ball was for a second, but he's found the ball and found his keeper. And by the way, there's the whistle from Jack Coutinho to end at this first half. It's a case of so far, so good for the host, Northwest Sydney Spirit. They're leading Central Coast Mariners by a goal to nil. That goal coming in the 26th minute from Ante Bakmas, his first goal of the season and his first goal in the black and gold of Northwest Sydney Spirit. Thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. This is Eric Subihano on the mic live from Christie Park. I'm sorry, the Arctic Circle. <laughs> we'll take a short break, about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll be back for the second half.
Welcome back to the second half of our coverage for round seven of NPL Men's New South Wales. It's at this stage, looking good for the hosts, Northwest Sydney Spirit. They're leading by a goal to nil over Central Coast Mariners. But the Mariners have uh, had plenty of interesting attacking moves, and certainly Spirit will have to plenty of hard work ahead of them if they are to grab all three points this evening. But they're in the pole position, so to speak, as the second half is about to get underway. So just a quick scan of the shirt numbers. There's the whistle from Jack Coutinho. Away we go for the second period. Now, will it be Spirits? Oh, that's, that's a Spirit free kick. Will it be Spirits' first win for 2024? Will it be the Mariners' second? Or will both teams have to settle for a point? About 45 minutes away uh, from finding out the answer to those questions. Now, Jared Lum who had literally had two hands in uh, the goal. His long throw flicked on by Grant Cornwell and finished by Ante Bakmas. That's what separates the two sides. Now, what will he do here? Goes far post and there's Chanchi back into the mixer and the keeper's missed it. Is a header and it's in, it's in. Spirit have scored. There's that Bakmas again in the right place at the right time to double his tally. For the evening a double spirits lead and it's another jared lum set piece master class zach chanchi with a very clever header back into the middle and it is ante bakmas it appears to be spirits number 16 who has applied the finishing touch despite all those navy blue jerseys on the goal line so what a start to the second half for spirit and that's improved the mood of david perkovich and all the spirit coaching staff There you go. Yes, so I always have a little bit of doubt when I call the goals, but I missed the ground announcer. I think that's Frank Markey, long time. Uh, I might even be a board member at Spirit, but a long time and certainly a valued member of this club, Frank Markey. He's on uh, PA duties this evening here at the Arctic Circle. And he's also said it's Dante Bakmas, so feeling a little bit better that I haven't butchered that goal. Now, Brantman, as the Mariners try to uh, launch a comeback. Great cross and the header. Ooh, it lands. And not even a yard. Maybe half a yard. Half a yard just past the far post. And it was Mate Bushek on as a half-time substitute he had gotten the space away from his marker the header was downward just like you teach the kids and it was down and wide but there we go the, the promising instant reply for the mariners from the kickoff went straight up the field and, and then was uh, the halftime substitute Bushek? I think that would be definitely have been his first touch, and Bushek's first touch nearly a goal. <clears throat> so, yes, I think, yes, just by the way, that was that stoppage. Bailey Brantman caught, caught a little bit of a hate, late hit, but. I think he's okay to continue. And the Spirit tried to switch it to Chanchi, the man who set up that second goal about a couple of minutes ago. As I can confirm Spirit as they were to begin uh, this game. But yes, there has been one sub, or at least one sub made by Mariners. It's this man on the ball, Bushek, who has a clever run from Shakluna. Right side of the box, decent, decent cross. Zinged it. I think towards that far top corner, but Chris Marquez is showing the safe hands. So it might be Adam Hall. Yep, let's see. So it's Adam Hall, number 39, who's made way for uh, Mate Bushek, number seven. And so uh, Bushek occupying the wide position that Hall was uh, operating in for uh, the majority of the first half, although Mariners are. Um, Switching positions a fair bit in attack, it has to be said. Yeah, Michelle, more target forward work, physical battle. 
with with Andre Parks and the combination of Parks and Ding wrangling the ball back for the Mariners. Good touch from Darrow Bond. Wigan. And Wigan uh, rebounds all the way to the Mariners keeper, Jack Wachowski. Don't worry, it's uh, that whistle's on the field behind us in that uh, Northwest Sydney football local game. Now, uh, interception from Chanchi. He's got options either side. Here's Wigan. Left side of the box, and that's a very needed lunge from a Mariners perspective. Paragali blocking the cross. And it will be a corner kick. Yes, by the way, Justin Smith also thinks it's Ante Bakmas who scored right at the start of the second half, so I think we're all in agreement there. A double for the number 16 for Spirit. Now, well, Lums helps set up a goal with a long throw and an attacking free kick. Be a hat-trick, so to speak, if Jared Lum helps set up a goal from a corner. And look at the crowd in that six-yard box for Wachowski to deal with. Great ball and almost an Olympico headed off the goal line. There's the shot from McKinley, and that's over the big net behind the Mariners' goal. Thomas Dale, really of the mindset that a quick game's a good game. He's flung a spare ball right from the technical area all the way over to the Mariners and they restart. Looking centrally are the Mariners with Smythe and Bodies hit the synthetic turf but no foul will go on. Well go on for a little moment before Carl Shaw fouls Bailey Brantman. By the way we might just um, go through at least the, my view of the two formations actually no Mariners of course down by two goals they want to get on with it. By the way, I actually had a brief chat with both uh, the voice of Central Coast football, Peter Pryor, and uh, football New South Wales reporter Justin Smith. They're in attendance here at the Arctic Circle this evening. And a big shout out again to Justin Smith uh, for reminding me that when Ante Bakmas opened the scoring, actually the first time that Spirit have led all season. So you could see how an important a result would be for the home side this evening. Now near the corner flag, it's Carl Shaw and. Every central defender I've ever met loves a shepherd. And Carl Shaw protects the ball, and it's a goal kick. Now, spirit field out from the back against the Mariners' high press. It's Chidiak. Back up! Just hold up the knee! Yeah. Don't run past me! On the far side of the field. Apologies, Chris. As um, night begins to settle in, it gets darker. We do have the floodlights here in Macquarie Park, but I'll do my best with what happens on the far side of the field. As Wigan with the outside of the boots. Um, good body strength from Deng against Michelle. And then... Lots of appeals. The Mariners win the appeal, so to speak, with uh, the throw. Shakluna. Shakluna, wait, hang on. What's going on here? And that's going to be a yellow card to McKinley. Chids, get your head on! Oh, sorry, not McKinley, Chidiak. And it's for that challenge. Parks and a little bit of a shimmy before he finds the other central defender, Chair Deng. And Neon Kuru immediately closed down. He's shown some promise for the Mariners attack in the first half, and Spirit very much aware of that. Now, yes, it's a very keenly contested contest in a physical sense. And it's Jack Coutinho just trying to keep a lid on things. It would be easy to just you know, show cards left, right, and center, but. And it's by and large avoided that just the two cards so far, both to spirit players, Ante Bakmas and, and Jake Chidiak. <coughs> so, what 
can the Mariners do with the attacking set piece? Brantman be the left footed option, and it's the captain, Lucas Shakluna, who would be the right footed option. He's, I think, taken all the set pieces so far. Perhaps uh, Lucas Villela's team going to try something different. Now, it's, well, take two. I think that was deliberate, to be fair. He goes short to Shakluna, long range, and is tipped onto the bar. Now Chedang on the rebound, saved again by Marquez. Especially the first save. What a save from the Spirit shot stopper. That can Spirit counter, but yeah. I'm very confident that Marquez got fingertips onto that one. That's why that long shot from Shakluna hit the bar. And for Lucas Shakluna, the contact on that long range strike, it was as, as delicious as a pastizzi. And it required that Marquez save. Chanchi. And Chanchi up against Prague Tapa. And Tapa, good defending. He's forced him to run out of play. Wigan. Uh, we saw it was Moroni then. A lovely back heel to find Bakmas. And Bakmas almost becoming a centre forward for the time being. And the ball going out wide to Chidiak. Again, that whistle's on the field behind us, but Spirit thought they had an opportunity. But they're forced to go back to the keeper. There's Nicholas. Now Chanchi takes a tumble. You go on, and I think that's surely off Paragali. Look at the juggling from David Perkovic. And we go. Here's Bakmas again stepping forward, very far forward. Marin is doing just enough to stop that attack. And now. <clears throat> Chidiak. There's uh, Chidiak and came deep. That was actually a clever run from McKinley to try and get to vacate the space. Oh, sorry, to run into the space left by you know, Chidiak coming deep, and then there's McKinley who concedes the foul. Attempted switch. Controlled by Nicholas. And now Wigan is away. And now Nicholas had to be quick. And he is to beat Smythe to the loose ball. Now, that's, well, that battle, a fascinating one. As it usually is when you got center back up against center forward. Bakmas won that particular duel, winning the free kick off Lucas Smythe. Or well, say center back. Uh, as I pointed out in the first half, Ante Bakmas is uh, stepping forward into central midfield when Spirit have the ball. And it's, it's like, like a lovely challenge. Whenever you watch a Spirit uh, men's game, is they do like to push a defender into central midfield when in possession, but it's not always the same one. Sometimes it's the left back. Corey Kavanaugh did that a lot, especially in their promotion season in 2022, but also last year. Sometimes it's the right back. But this, today it's one of the center backs. And Ante Bachmeister has been very effective. <coughs> now, Nicholas instead goes backwards across the line instead of forwards. Uh, more spirit possession play. 
And now Chanchi's on the run. Gets it back from Wigan. Chanchi, left side of the area. Now Wigan again. He's crowded out by Marone. That whistle wasn't ours. And, uh, well, she's done well to keep the ball for that long. And uh, that's a foul against Michelle. And by the way, thanks so much to Pete Pryor for getting us a battery with some more charge. Really appreciate it. Hate it when a stream goes down. As Simon Nicholas zings a ball onto field two. So it's a chance for that local Prem's keeper to touch an NPL match ball. Right, so we had another ball soon enough. And now Spirit, well, it's, it's really in the ascendancy, not just scoreboard-wise, but uh, the pattern of play we've seen in the last 10 minutes or so. Actually, the whole half, it has to be fair, because, I mean, yes, there was that Lucas Luna shot uh, tipped onto the crossbar by Chris Marquez. And Simon Nicholas again going for safety, but actually that won't go out of play. So Nicholas has some more work to do, and that will hit the roof. The roof of uh, you know, one of the uh, covered areas here in the Arctic Circle. I guess, I guess that was that Marquez double save from Shakluna and Deng. But now this, though, that's going to be easier for Marquez. In fact, he doesn't even bother using the gloves. He won't pick it up till he's pressured by Smythe. Oh, yes. It does feel like the majority of possession has been the spirits in this half. Now Wigan. By the way, I do like to see it. Who's warming up? See my come on next. So Richard Darko, number seven. Man with a very good left footed shot on him. He's got the bib off. So I do suspect we'll see him very soon. Now Jesse Michelle. Oh, he found some space, but too much space, so to speak. Moved too early. Offside. Bushek, looking a bit of finding a little bit of room facing forward. Brantman credited out by gold jerseys. Now, uh, I think like, I see, see the idea. Wigan wanted to move it quickly, but he's uh, overhit that pass intended for Michelle. Yes, Richard Darko getting some last minute instructions from Luca Falcone. It's a very good option for Spirit to be able to bring off the bench. Now, uh, the shot from Bushek, and not as close as his earlier header. Marquez not really bothered by that shot, rolling wide. It's... Okay, well, it's... Let's see how this requires a reshuffle. It's generally attacking player for attacking player, as it's been a good shift, a very good shift from Zach Chanchi, number 18. He's replaced by Richard Darko, number 7. And at least for the time being, he'll occupy the left side of the attack that Richard Darko will, that um, Chanchi was operating in very effectively for the opening 62 minutes or so. Now, good header, and uh, Carl Shaw bombs it away. Another good header from Panagali. And some applause from the Mariners' uh, technical area. Now, Bakmas needed to be quick. And it is a corner kick. See an in-swinger coming up, and Leon Kuru, uh, well, he was going to be the nuisance, so to speak, in front of the keeper. Now he's offered the short option. It goes over him, and then straight down at Chris Marquez's throat. Now, corner at the other. In fact, the double sub. That's what's been cooked up by Lucas Villela. So, yep, Mariners not quite in.
kitchen sink territory yet, but they're getting close to it. But first, they have to defend this spirit corner kick. It's Jared Long, which what I think is Spirit's fourth corner of the game. Signal and the outswinger. Keeper stays on his line. There's Shaw, and didn't quite get the clean contact on it. Good challenge in the air from Chair Deng. Now, Mariners trying to break from everyone have, being inside their own box. And big cheer from the hosts. And then, oh, followed. Followed by disbelief from Jacob Chidiak. Some ping for the foul there. And what he and a lot of people here thought was a clean challenge. Shaw might have given it away. And then just, I think Smy wasn't quite aware of where his teammates were. He sent it, sent it towards Chris Marquez, who will slow things down. <coughs> Marquez, well, Smythe possibly being a bit naughty. You're not supposed to block the keeper from kicking it out. It's Smythe did stick a leg out, but Marquez unbothered sending it into the opposition half of the field. So 20 minutes played in the second half. And if you've just joined us, Eric Subihane here on the mic. Assisted, as is often the case, by our camera operator Chester. It's the Filipino Dream Team in the Arctic Circle and Spirit leading. Mariners by two goals to nil. Darko trying to extend that. Good cutback. There's the shot, which looked very good off Ollie Wiggins' left boot. It's deflected wide, and Darko trying to be the impact player. He's just come off the bench. A very nice run. They found the cutback for Wigan as well. But the Mariners had enough bodies in the way. Now it's the Spirits' fifth corner. Spirit leading 2-0 because of a double from Ante Bakmas, a goal in each half. Can they add a third? Can Bakmas complete his hat-trick? Here we go. Far post again. This is the target for Lum, and then that's it. It's the deflection of a gold shirt. And it's over, and we will see that double substitution. So number 42, Alexander Guntunas, and number 13, Yanni Nassis. He's coming onto the field. So Lucas Smythe, one of the players we drawn, he will not add to his seven goal tally for the season. He's replaced up front by Nassis, number thir 13. And in fact, uh, Che Deng is the other player replaced. So Guntunas going into the central defense. Now, there we go, that's, uh, oh, hang on. It's, there's a whistle. Okay, that's, that's, I have to look at my notes a bit. Yeah. I misremembered, I thought Bachmas had been booked already. He had not. But he joins his teammates, Simon Nicholas and Jake Chidiak in the book now. Mariners free kick. Kluna delivers the free kick, so again. So, three spirit yellow cards to go along with their two goals. And as there's the nice ball from Bushek towards Neon Kuru, he fires it towards the near post. And through this hate being beaten at the near post, two strong hands from Chris Marquez. And the corner kick for the Mariners coming up. <coughs> it's uh, Shakluna going short. And in fact, no. He will end up being the one taking it. Sorry, my apologies. So, Bailey Brantman now uh, jogging into the middle. And Shakuna signals, and there's enough of a spirit header at least to get it out of the box. Paragali had the shot closed down by Michelle. And then it's Bakmaz, who's found some space, and now it's a foot race on here. Nice ball from McKinley and uh, the right ideas. In fact, yeah, there's a pass of their own, of his own from Jack Coutinho just to get that second ball off the field. And Jack Coutinho is multitasking, clearing the, clearing the second ball while also refereeing the game. And there we go again, Mariner set piece providing a counter-attacking opportunity for Spirit, but the Mariners did just enough to stop it. Now, Brotman allowed to turn onto his favoured left foot. Wins the free kick. Off, 
off Chudia. Discussions. Earnest discussions as we enter the final 20 minutes of the game. Plus any additional stoppages. It's once again uh, the dead ball being discussed by Brantman and Shikwuna. Will it be left footer or right footer? It's Brantman over the wall, over the goal. Skims the roof of the net. short now oh sorry spirit goes short off the goal kick as the Mariners step up to press there's the more direct option taken by Nicholas and then up into the early evening sky by Harry Menham move once more Paragali getting forward and it's Marquez he didn't get there and it's loose in the box for a little moment Spirit survive now try to go the other way as well and it's what's happened here in fact you know I think they've stopped play because yeah Marquez that good punch and oh Pete Pryor keeping the stream going once again running up more gear to the scaffold uh, Keeping himself busy before he braves the Lake Macquarie Regional Football Facility scissor lift tomorrow when he calls Emerging Jets versus Sydney University. Yeah. Okay, double sub for Spirit coming up. So it's number six, Corey Kavanagh, and at number nine, Yanni Bazoukas. So who's making way? Of course, got to look all over the place yeah. now that subs have to leave from the nearest touchline rather than having to leave from exit by the technical area. But in fact, this time at least we are, we are seeing the two substituted players exit right in front of us so Yanni Bazoukas will replace number, Yanni Bazoukas number nine replaces number 19 Jesse Michel Bazoukas going up front while Corey Kavanagh number six he was Checking, he's replaced number four Jared McKinley. So that's another straight swap. Kavanagh going into central midfield. And yes, he either plays in that position or has all often played a lot as an inverted fullback you know, for Spirit. So starting as a fullback in defense and then ending up in central midfield. And Spirit have the ball either way, a role that Kavanagh is very familiar with. with the header and the touch last touch despite fervent home protests and there's a second ball on the field it's Ollie Wiggins you never see that Ollie Wigan holding a ball while the game's going on but can't be handball because it was a second ball <laughs> oh that must have been confusing but they've sorted that out soon enough Guntunas Back to Men over to Menem, then back to uh, the keeper. So Wachowski going long. It's interesting to see in the, these closing stages how much adventure uh, Corey Kavanagh has in attack. As you can see, Jared Lum, I mean, for the whole game, he's been the deepest player, the deepest of that spirit midfield trio. That's when Ante Bakmas is stepping up to join him. And so it's been Lum playing just behind Wigan. And first, 
First McKinley now, Kavanaugh is on the ball right now. So. And how adventurous to Spirit be. An interesting one as a Qantas plane flies overhead. Uh, pretty much in the final 15 minutes. And Spirit. Spirit with a two goal lead, but you never know, goal difference might count. And Darko at a third. He flicks it over the fender, does a little spin. Darko holds off a defender and then cuts it back. He cuts it back to the Mariners. Another Jared Long throw coming up. And there's the flick on. This time, I think it was Cornwell again with the flick on, just like for Spirit's first goal. This time, Marin is clear. Now, Lum again. And there's Nicholas. Well, actually, he's done just enough because he's prevented the counter. He didn't get he didn't get the ball, at least cleanly with the tackle with the tackle, but the ball didn't go past him, and that's just as good from a spirit perspective. Now, uh, Lum's little spin didn't work, so Bushek trying to run it away. And now Bakmas, of course, has to be careful. He's on a yellow. And Bushek. Providing a stern physical challenge. Now the ball over the top and two number 13s chasing the ball. And Simon Nicholas has almost hit the Spirit under 20s for warming up on field two behind us. Because of course, the Spirit doing things a little bit differently, or at least in the order of the games compared to most teams because of their women's, in, women's first grade and men's first grade double headers. Those two games going back to back. So the Spirit home games, men's under 20s goes after first grade, not before it. Now, the quick free from Bradman, but he stopped on the edge of the box. Oh, it's actually the 7 p.m. kickoff should be underway now. So, yes, please stick with us yet until <coughs> until this one is done. Then you can switch over. There's three 7 p.m. games in NPL Men's New South Wales. All in the early stages. That's Marconi versus. Sydney FC called by the People's Champion Nicholas Kutniak. Also Hills United versus Rockdale called by the Adonis Will Gotsis. And St. George FC versus RPL Icon. So Donatien Neon Kuru. It's all promising, but just hasn't, wasn't able to uh, play his part in the key breakthrough that um, could get the Mariners on the scoreboard today. A uh, good, good shift nonetheless from the Mariners number 11. He's replaced by number 12, Ty Headley. Now Buzuk is making a real nuisance of himself with the fresh legs, of course. Sorry, Tay Headley, I think is how it's pronounced. Apologies. And that new Mariners player that's just come on. Paragali. Now Shakluna. Oh. Quick feet to keep it away from Darko. Now aiming for the far side. Menem. Finding Brantman. And I'm still up in attack. Brantman he couldn't find a way through. Couldn't find the space to work a shot. Now going the other way. It's my neck, my back, my Jacob Chidiak. And I think he's definitely looking for the killer pass. Instead, he steady goes back. Lumb. Then Cornwell. And all the way back to the keeper. That's by the way, uh, the final stream for tonight, 7:15 p.m tonight so that'll kick off soon as well St. George City versus Blackdown City from Penshurst Park <clears throat> yeah. can be a bit confusing two St. George teams in the competition this year yes there's St. George FC and St. George City both predominantly red and white colors but yes two uh, different clubs for sure now it's Headley does he have the impetus to make a difference after coming off the bench? Headley, yeah, double up on him. And it goes back to Menem, and there's the volley, and uh, look promising off the boot. 
but then it drops wide of Chris Marquez's left hand post. Just a, I suppose just to complete things, yeah. two NPL men's games tomorrow that you can watch live on the Football New South Wales YouTube page via the live tab. They're both at 3 p.m. Wollongong Wolves versus Western Sydney Wanderers. And what a great job Andrew Christensen's doing, by the way, in charge of the Wanderers Academy. So Wolves versus Wanderers, 3 p.m. tomorrow down on the South Coast, called by Dublin Dave, David Feeney. And the other 3 p.m. kickoff is Sydney United 58 versus Sutherland Sharks. And that's called by the Russian Simon Hill, Alexander Molchanov. and Darko first time and he just split the difference between Bakmas and Wigan. Mariners looking for space. Here's Headley. At the edge of the box and the side foot. Oh, Marquez was just a spectator but it goes wide. Uh, still life in this one. We're in the final 10 minutes of regulation. Spirit leading by two goals to nil. A goal in each half from Ante Bakmas but We've seen it. We've seen late shows, late comebacks, usually at, the, at this ground, usually by Spirit, of course. Who could forget the miracle of Macquarie Park last year? And Spirit were down 4-2 in the 89th minute and somehow won 5-4 over Wollongong Wolves. So heartbreak for David Carney there. And the Wolves head coach. I'm sure it was another one. Another one where Spirit were down 2-0 late against Southern Sharks. Scored two very late goals to rescue a point in a 2 all draw. This time, Spirit are preventing to, uh, aiming to prevent such a situation. Paragali plays it forward. Lum off the chest and has done well to find Kavanagh. And Kavanagh is assessing his options. Goes wide to Darko. There's a signal from Bazooka as he wanted the cross. Instead, it goes over him. And now Chidiak looking for the far post run, but now he's got to track back in defense, which he's done very enthusiastically. He's you know, certainly made Grant Cornwell's job a lot easier. And as we mentioned in the first half, Grant Cornwell not normally playing on the right side of a back four. So I'm sure the man, sorry, so I'm sure Grant Cornwell, the spirit skipper, will appreciate uh, Jared McClendon's efforts this evening. Darko. Now, <clears throat> I think he did like what was in front of him. So he just uh, moved backwards and then, yeah, spirit. Uh, just finding three players. Because, uh, the, the draw the Mariners out as the Mariners really now need to chase the game. But, uh, it's a necessary risk for the youngsters in navy blue shirts because uh, trying to nil need to take some risks, but that will provide an increased chance of space in behind for the Spirit to find. Uh, Spirit have scored twice in uh, this game, just like they did in the first part of this doubleheader. Uh, the women's game between Spirit and Manly, however, that finished in a two-all draw. Emily Minette's very late equaliser, rescuing a point for the Queens from the Northern Beaches. And Spirit looking reasonably comfortable in this one. Although you never... Uh, as there's the shot from Bushek, takes a deflection, and it just actually you know, deflections. Could be a keeper's worst nightmare, but that... Uh, Touch actually made it easier for Marquez. Now, as we look ahead, well, there's no easy games in this competition, but uh, Spirit's next three games is, as Bazooka saw, got the touch and the shot. And the second shot, it's fired wide, and yep, Chidek was adamant, and Jack Coutinho agrees that took a deflection. Spirit's sixth corner coming up. Yes, no easy games in this competition. Spirit's next three games away to always tough Rockdale Illington on Sunday the 31st that's actually Catholic Easter Sunday then on Saturday 6th of April a game here at the Arctic Circle versus St George FC newly promoted to this division for 2024 and Saturday 13th of April also here at the Arctic Circle it's Snowflake City Spirit versus Hills United also newly promoted for the 2024 season there should be three very good games I'm sure 
Again, far post is the strategy, and back into the middle. Straight at Jack Wachowski. Meanwhile, for the Mariners, if you look at upcoming fixtures, on, what are we going to call it, Catholic Holy Saturday, Saturday the 30th of March. And the Mariners have an away trip to the Palace in a meeting with Marconi Stallion since Wigan finding himself in the left-back spot. As Spirit recovered off the set piece, but Wigan knew his role, knew where the danger was and snuffed it out. And Darko wins a free kick of Panagali. So yeah, it's uh, Mariners. So yeah, that's right. The Central Coast Mariners. Yeah, that's it. The away trip on Catholic Holy Saturday, the third Saturday, the 30th of March. Away to Marconi Stallions. Then on Saturday, the 6th of April, a really interesting one. I like what the Mariners are doing with this one. It's an A-League men's, NPL men's New South Wales doubleheader. Saturday, the 6th of April. In the A-League men's, you've got Central Coast Mariners versus... Wellington Phoenix, who, by the way, are doing a great job this season in that competition. That's at 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, the 6th of April, while the Mariners Academy will host Sydney Olympic at Central Coast Stadium immediately after that, 7.30 p.m. Sunday, so Saturday, 6th of April. So that's a good one for uh, the football fans of the Central Coast, and I assume the voice of Central Coast football, Peter Pryor, will call uh, the NPL game between Mariners and Olympic. Then in Following that, Sunday 14th of April, an away trip for the Young Mariners to face Blacktown City, the pride of Western Sydney, at Landon Stadium. Another plane flies overhead. <coughs> uh, this, uh, this venue, this venue, interesting one. It's um, one of a, a few, a couple of venues as well as the run from Headley and oh couldn't find a teammate but still alive for the Mariners the shot on the turn strong hands from Marquez fall off from Paragalli actually he doesn't get there it will be no it's going to be a goal kick I don't know, I don't know how the spirit player managed that but it's been the touch off the Mariners and another great save from Marquez and he really wants that clean sheet he kept two clean sheets in the opening two rounds, both nil all draws for Spirit against one against Sydney FC, one against Sutherland Sharks. And he's only a few minutes away from getting it. Oh, to my earlier thought, yeah. This venue here in Macquarie Park, yeah. One of a few NPL venues where you can see planes fly overhead. I think the Illinden Sports Center, home ground of well, home ground of Rockdale, Illinois, St. George FC and Sydney FC Academy this season. Yeah, that's another one where you can see planes fly overhead. And then there's also Fraser Park in League Two Men's, although I mean, that's so close. I mean, the planes there are so close, that's not on the flight path. That's pretty much on the runway, Fraser Park. And Shakluna looking left. Headley has found space again. It's been decent since coming off the bench for the Mariners, Tay Headley. Goes back, Shakluna, long shot, and uh, didn't test Marquez as much as that earlier shot, which was tipped onto the crossbar. But uh, Marquez adding another save to his tally. And we're uh, going to see a substitution, which would be uh, the Mariners' fourth. It's fourth of the evening, but it would be their third substitute and final substitution window. So this would be it in terms of spirit subs. Number 36, young Kaya Williams, about to come on the field. Now, Headley stopped. There's the shot, which is scooped high and wide. So who will be replaced? Who will be replaced for Spirit? Oh, well. It's always good to take advantage of when players are, or when we're, uh, commentary position and filming position is behind the technical area. And yeah, very good performance. From Ollie Wigan, we generally know him as a winger, as a wide player, but he's done well as kind of a more advanced central midfielder for Spirit today. He'll get a little bit of an early mark, and it's going to be a run out in first grade for Kai Williams, number 36.
Hold up work from Brazoukas near the corner flag. And he'll win a corner. Very nice stuff. Of course, for Spirits, about as much as game management. Uh, running the clock down now in the final bit of the 90. In fact, all eyes on Thomas Dale to see how much time added on will be played. Now, in fact, might they go short just to help uh, take a few seconds off the clock? Indeed, they do. And Darko try to win a corner, but in fact, it will be a goal kick. Now there'll be yeah, uh, in some stoppages. So Thomas Dale, today's fourth official, has signaled five or a minimum uh, five minutes time added on to be played. So now or never for the Mariners, if they are to get on the score sheet. And it's going to be a substitution. Oh yeah, that's um yes, Mariners. Yep, they have well they have a sub left. They also have a window left because they used the sub at half time. But I can see number six Jordan Small. The bib is off. He's standing next to Dan Ullman, who's been taking the photographs today for Football New South Wales. He actually did that for the women's game between Spirit and Manly earlier as well. Dan Ullman doing a fine job as always. And by the way, give him a photo, give him a follow on Instagram at Aptitude Photography. He does a lot of work, not just that for Football New South Wales, a lot of photography, especially of uh, the New South Wales women's competitions. Man on shot from the Spirit bench. Darko has then lost out to Shakluna. But then Darko, like, nice work, yes. Lesson for the kids. If you lose the ball, don't just um, don't just give up. Win it back is the best time. Often the best time to win it back is straight after you've lost it. That's exactly what Darko demonstrated there. There's the header from Guntunas. Then header from Chidiak. Bazookas going wide and shouts a keep it from Kai Williams. But then Williams fires it towards Harry Menem. Just in front of us, Jordan Small waits patiently to get a brief run out in this game. So it goes back to Marquez. Darko is something to chase, and I think the spin on that will help slow it down for Richard Darko. Then, didn't like his options, he's just aiming for Bazookas, but Bazookas will make a game of this one. Yeah, exciting challenge, but Andre Parks has dealt with the situation. Now Paragali. Oh, sorry, my, that's my apologies, that's Prayag Tapa. side of the field spirit want to throw which they're not going to get I'm doing my best to see it's quite dark over there and that will be well the Mariners throw yeah. yes. and will this be the sub yep so prior top I think I hope my eyes are good enough yep number 16 prior top is the replacer so straight swap in central midfield Jordan small will get a couple of minutes alongside Lucas the Chacluna in the Mariners engine room We've got enough time for one last plug of the women's streams coming up tomorrow. Yeah, I think I do. So tomorrow, 3 p.m. in the second tier, the League One women's match of the round, Camden Tigers versus Southeast Phoenix. That one is called by Bo Clements. Now, if you were at Blacktown City Games a few years ago, long shot from Good Tunas, it's in. It's in. And they're on the scoreboard at least. There's a wonderful strike by the center straw defender coming out from the back. Marquez made a lot of good saves but could do nothing about that. And there's no clean sheet, but there is a goal for the Mariners. They keep up their record of scoring in every game this so far this season. So adding some respectability to the scoreline for the Mariners. There you go. By the way, yes, finish that anecdote, yes. Bo Clements, caller of Camden Tigers versus Southeast Phoenix tomorrow, 3 p.m. Yeah, if you were at Blackdown City Games five or so years ago, and you remember, or possibly more, and you remember when the literal Childs was the ground announcer for... Ground announcer for Blacktown City Home Games. Yeah, he's grown up and he's now a football New South Wales commentator. Well done to you, Bo. As there's a bit of cramp being stretched out. Other women's games, seven games from NPL Women's New South Wales, the top tier. Oh, no, six, yeah, my apologies. Six games from NPL Women's New South Wales available tomorrow on Football New South Wales YouTube via the live tab. Jack Coutinho signals that will add the time on as the cramp continues to be stretched out. 
But yes, 4.45 p.m. tomorrow, Football New South Wales Institute from Northern versus Northern Tigers, called by Dave McDonald. Four women's NPL women's games at 5 p.m. I'll be at the Village Green to call University of New South Wales versus Sydney Olympic. Pete Pryor will be on the Lake Macquarie Regional Football Facility. Scissor lift to call Emerging Jets versus Sydney Uni. Wollongong Sax Boy, Thomas Phillips, will be calling Illawarra Stingrays versus Blacktown Spartans. And there's also MacArthur Rams versus Glacial Ravens at 5 p.m. tomorrow. MacArthur Rams, winners of the last two championships, by the way. Very good work by the incredibly good-looking coach, Stephen Peters. And then to round off the women's action tomorrow, 6.45 p.m. from Valentine Sports Park, Bulls FC Academy versus RPL Leichhardt, called by the People's Champion, Nicholas Kutniak. That's forward here. And, of course, two NPL men's New South Wales games tomorrow, Wollongong Wolves versus Western Sydney Wanderers, called by Dave Feeney. And City United 58 versus Southern Sharks, called by Alexander Molchanov. past the additional five because of the, um, uh, the player spirit player needing cramp stretch and the goal as well very nice goal it was oh, well, some work to do and could be a chance for Headley into the box he side puts it and Chris Marquez positioned perfectly and that is that it's Northwest Sydney Spirits first win of the 2024 NPL men's in New South Wales season they have defeated Central Coast Mariners Academy by two goals to one. Ante Bakmas, very much the goal-scoring hero for Spirit tonight. And scoring his first goal of the evening in the 26th minute. A nice flick on from Gant Cornwell, helping that off for Jared Lum Longfo. And Bakmas scored right at the start of the second half, getting on the end of Zach Chachi's header after a Jared Lum set piece. Two goals for him. Alexander Guntuna scored from way out from very long range in second half stoppage time but it wasn't enough for the Mariners and they have been defeated but it's all smiles for the black and gold for Northwest Sydney Spirit I hope you stick around and watch games currently in progress in NPL men's New South Wales firstly it's Hills United nil Rockdale Illenden one as we speak that's called by Will Gotsis St George FC one beating RPL Leichhardt nil that's a bit of a shock there nil all between Marconi Stallions and Sydney FC. That's called by the People's Champion, Nicholas Kutniak. And St. George City versus Blackdown City currently nil all. Those are your four choices now. If you wish to continue to war, watch more of this great competition. But from the Arctic Circle, this is Eric Subihano signing off for Football New South Wales on behalf of Football New South Wales and tonight's camera operator, Chester. Thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Wishing you plenty of good vibes, great coffee, sick tattoos, wrestlers, and great tunes after you've won a game. We hope to see you soon.